Hey, what's up guys? I wanna do another video on this uh, artwork that I uh, previously showed. I did like a little unboxing, but I wanna kinda of show you a little more detail, talk about it a little bit more. Um, this again is from Ah Art, and um, it's a really, really cool story. It's a couple from, uh, from New York, uh, Luke and Regina Powell. And in 2012, uh, Regina went into uh, Luke's shop where he was working, and um, you know they're kinda of looking around the store a little bit, and he was showing her a bunch of pieces. She didn't really have money to buy at the time. And then of course they started dating and they found that they had a lot of uh, you know similar interests, a lot in common, and eventually they got married. And they're both very much into old films and horror stuff and that whole scene and, and they were both artists and they wanted to figure out how to make a living. And if, you know, like a lot of great people, they figured what's better than uh, making a living doing the one thing you love most. And then in their case, it's art. So since then, they've been working on different pieces, trying to go to uh, shows, trying to get their name out there and stuff. And uh, I think their work's fantastic. Um, I've always had a fascination with uh, some older stuff. I, I liked horror. I'm not like a huge horror buff. I know there's, there's certain people that are just really, really into it. I don't have um, a, a strong uh, interest in, in horror movies per se. For the most part, if I watch a movie, I watch like a comedy or an action film. But a lot of the old, uh, all these but goodies really, really have my interest. And specifically, the one piece I showed you before, which I'll show you again right now, this is uh, Regina's interpretation of the, the episode, The Masks, from Twilight Zone. The original Twilight Zone series was amazing. It is definitely a piece of film history. And it was, it was out there, it was strange, it was weird. But you know what? Horror movies back in the day, like the Twilight Zone series, they all had kind of a point to it. It wasn't just entertainment. Uh, a lot of the episodes had um, life lessons to be learned. You know, in this in this case, this whole episode was about greed and how it turns people to be ugly. You know, and, and a, like a literal interpretation of being ugly. And in fact, if you've never seen the Twilight Zone, the episode The Masks, uh, I'll probably either link you or just tell you right now. Search for it. search The Masks, uh, Twilight Zone, and you'll find that there's there's someone who at least one person that posted um, the entire episode on YouTube, the original uh, episode in like four parts. And if you've never seen it before, watch it. You know, I know a lot of, especially a lot of you younger people watching, you don't get exposed to the old movies and, and old music and stuff like that. And there's just a lot to be said about it. You know, it's really fascinating. There's nothing that's ever been quite like the original Twilight Zone, the entire series. It was very, very cool. Like I said, not a specific horror buff, but I find great entertainment in watching old episodes like that. A lot of older scary stuff I was really into. I'm not so much into new scary stuff, you know, the modern day horror fl uh, films. A lot of it's more torture and, and just kind of guts and, and that kind of stuff. Of course, a lot of it's scary, but the original stuff was um, uniquely scary and uh, just, just fascinating. Diff I mean, like, I grew up on Tales from the Crypt and all that kind of crap, and it's just amazing. Really, really interesting stuff to watch. That was cool. That was creepy, eerie, but, you know, fascinating to me. New horror stuff to me doesn't, doesn't do anything at all. I just, I'm not entertained by it. But anyway, this was the one piece. Now, this is a print. Um, if you're not familiar with just artwork in general, you have obviously originals. When someone creates the art, then you have prints. Prints are basically really high quality uh, copies. Okay, so if you can't afford an original piece of artwork that someone put hours and hours of their time into, you can get a print from them. It's a lot cheaper. Most of their prints that they sell are like twelve dollars to twenty dollars. They're very very affordable. So if you like some of their artwork, some of the creations they've had, but you don't have the money to buy an original, um, you can always get a print, which is really cool. And this one is a print. And I'm going to frame this and I'm going to hang this in my house because I love it. And it tells a story and it's also a reminder every single day when I see it, it's not just, hey, that's a creepy picture, but there's a story behind it. And particularly if someone comes over to my house and they see my other like decor that I have around, they see this, they're like, what's the deal with that? And it gets a conversation going. Oh, that's, you know, the masks, the episode of Twilight Zone. I never saw that. And you talk about it and talk a little bit about human greed and, and you know, how it turns people ugly, stuff like that. So it's just, it's fascinating. It's a great conversation piece as is all art, I suppose. But it's also, you know, up to the, uh, the person looking at it. Um, art is a very situational enjoyment, I should say. You can look at one piece of art, doesn't matter what it is, and you could say, what the hell is that? That is stupid. Someone wants that? And then you can look at another piece of art and say, that's amazing. And like, art can be emotional for some people. And it just is a wide spectrum. And of course, art is very, very um, specific to certain types of people and certain styles. Some people will love this style of art. Other people will think it's a waste of time. It's just, it's like anything else. You know, you get people like it, people don't like it. 
but I found it really fascinating. And as all the, all the pieces that they have right now, this was my favorite. This did stand out right away. I knew I had to have it. It was just a really, really nice piece. Like I said, it has a little bit of history and it reminds me of kind of my childhood. And I remember being creeped out, being a little kid watching the Twilight Zone, you know, and it was scary at the time. As an adult, I see it completely different. It goes with a lot of things, just a lot of music and movies. As an adult, you hear things and see things differently. You pick up on different things, you know, for different reasons because your, you know, your thoughts have changed. You, the way you think has changed. But what a fantastic piece, a really great interpretation of that episode. And I love it. Definitely my favorite. Now, besides that, because I do focus mainly on, you know, like kind of old school horror stuff. Um, as you saw in the first video, I wanted to focus on something that was actually new to them, which is really cool. This is something that, you know, I kind of brought up the subject of the Jersey Devil. The Jersey Devil is a legend in New Jersey. And like I said, I will have more details on uh, the Jersey Devil and the legend of the Jersey Devil in the future when I do my story time video talking about my experiences with it. But um, this is a new creature to them. It was a, a new idea. I mean, if you don't live in Jersey, a lot of people don't know about it, don't hear about it, you know, don't care about it. It's specific to New Jersey. Um, but when you do grow up in Jersey, it's something you, you definitely come across and hear about and you hear about the legends and the stories and stuff like that, you know, and, and some people think it's good. Some people think it's evil, but it's fascinating. I'll talk more to that in the future, but I brought this idea up to them because um, they said that they also do custom work. So I said, you know, I would love, love to have some kind of art pieces um, you know, expressing the Jersey Devil. So what they did was they owned, they both took their own interpretation of it. Now at this point, they don't know anything about it. They never heard about it. So they wanted to research it, look into it a little bit. And they got, they grew quite fascinated with it right away. Obviously any kind of folklore and legends, the Jersey Devil is, is no different than the Loch Ness Monster or Sasquatch, you know, aliens. And the fact that there's a lot of people that really, really believe in it. A lot of people who really think they've seen it, but there's really, there's no proof. It's a legend. You know, it's a myth, but a lot of us do, you know, find that we believe in myths. Just because you can't prove something doesn't mean you don't believe in it. And this is certainly something I happen to believe in. Um, but what I liked about their approach to this is that they separated their creative ideas and they wanted to show their own personal interpretations, um, you know, individually. So Luke came up with this piece here, and this is a, a print. This is not the original. Um, again, just a really high quality uh, copy of it um, but uh, this is his interpretation of the Jersey Devil and this is very much um, a uh, more historic approach it's like visually the creature itself this is what a lot of people uh, see it as especially like back in the day when there were sketches and drawings of it uh, and it's a really cool the way he, he did it it's really really nice it's a woodblock uh, style and of course in the bottom here he put the little you know Jersey Devil on there this is a really to me, a visually appealing piece to frame up and display. It's very, very cool. Um, I liked his uh, interpretation quite a bit. It's just the old school kind of take on it. Very, very often. And then Regina, she came up with this, and I took this out of the, the plastic covering uh, so you can maybe look in more detail without the, uh, the glare. But this is an original. This is not a print. This is the original piece of artwork. Uh, you know, very grateful for her to send the original. And this is a totally different style of art. And as you can see, a totally different approach to this creature. This is much more of a, um, to me, a, uh, I don't know how to explain it. Hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to think the right words to really express how I'm personally seeing this. This I see as mythical and um, kind of old school. Whereas this, I see very much like a modern approach to some kind of a creature. Um, this is almost like, like circus-like, like you would see this kind of banner if you, you know, in the freak show at the circus, something like that. I love the style. They're, they're both completely different things. I love this and everything that this represents and, and you know, how it actually exposes this particular legend. And this is a whole different way to, to see it. Obviously, uh, much more detailed. Um, this is, happens to be a, uh, a pen and watercolor. So you have a combination of both a uh, pen and the watercolor paint, which actually complement them uh, each other quite a bit. The pen gives a lot of detail. The watercolor obviously blends in very nicely. Really, really fascinating. I'm trying to give you a close up of this. I mean, the detail is fantastic on this. They're all the way down to the little chin hair. It's a great expression of this, uh, this animal, this legend. 
and uh, I love it. I, it. Like I said, in the first one, I was going to pick which one I like, like initially, and want to kind of go, yeah, I like this one, I like this one. And I really had a hard time deciding which one I like more because I like them both for different reasons. I like this because of the detail. I like this because of the color. Um, it, it's very visual. It pops out at you. I mean, you feel, when you're looking at this thing, you feel like it's there. It, it's very three-dimensional. But I really like and appreciate kind of the more abstract, you know, appearance of this um, uh, woodblock. So it's, I, can't, I like them both for different reasons, but just an awesome, awesome job at expressing, you know, what this legend is all about. And it's just, it's really cool. So I'm extremely happy, you know, with their, their products or artwork. And um, like I said, if it's something, if you're kind of into art and you like these different things and you, you like uh, some of the horror stuff and you want something, you know, to hang up in your room or, or whatever in your house, um, the prints are a great way to go because like I said, for like 12 bucks or 15 bucks, you can get their artwork. You know, it doesn't have to be an original. You don't have to be an art dealer. You don't have to be a collector or something. You don't have to worry about value. Some people just like, they like getting prints because they really appreciate the art piece but maybe they can't afford the original or they just don't need the original. Some people, the collectors out there, you know, a part of me likes the originals because of the collecting aspect of it. But, you know, at the end of the day, art's there to look at and appreciate. It doesn't matter if you have the original or the copy, you're seeing the same piece of art. And it's just really cool. So I'm extremely happy with them. Um, and they're really, really nice people. Their ultimate goal, and I think this is fantastic. I mean, they're they're, just starting this whole art venture. Um, it's you know, not too, you know, too uh, deep into it yet. It's, it's kind of brand new. I mean, it's only gone, going on for a little over a year now. And uh, so far, I think they're doing a fantastic job. But what's really cool is their ultimate goal, really, is to start a studio um, that teaches art in Syracuse, New York, you know, where they're, where they're based out of. And I think that's fantastic, you know, to kind of give back to the community that they're really, they're truly artists in that this is what they love. This is their passion. It's what makes them happy. And, you know, and their ultimate goal is to make a living doing it and, uh, and support the, the artistic community and really teach other people who are kind of into it, how to do it better and how to, uh, how to love it and enjoy it. So it's, uh, it's admirable to, uh, to see that kind of a, an actual goal. It's not just, Hey, I want to make money. It's, hey, I love this. This is my passion. This is what I want to do. And ultimately, I'd love to teach others to find their passion too. So that's very, very cool. And I would love to support anyone who's into their, their hobbies. So that's it, guys. And thank you very much for watching. If you're interested in their artwork and want to see what they're all about, um, check out their website. I'll put links in the description box down below. And uh, you get to see one more of my, I, I suppose, unlimited hobbies. At the end of the day, art doesn't have to be expensive. I think when you tell people, hey, this is art, this is like original painting or something like that, people always assume that, hey, it's gotta be super expensive and collectible. No, there's a lot of really cheap, amazing art out there. And art really is uh, up to interpretation. You may like something that costs a dollar at a garage sale and absolutely love it. Or you may be the person that just happens to have the bad luck of loving the $100,000 painting. <laughs> so either way, art's very cool. And if you enjoy it, all the best. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you soon. Take care.